Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we'll be putting together a Goliath Mauler from the box set. We'll be putting, show you how I put together this guy. Um, watch the mistakes I made. Try to avoid them yourself. And good luck with this one. Not as hard as the Orlock one. Uh, and it's a pretty cool model. So let's go get started. It's this guy right here. <laughs> All right, to start building our Goliath Mauler, I have a baking tray out in front of me, and the reason is that catches all the spare bits and holds my instructions. So I'm gonna take my instructions. You get a little recommended tools here, but that's good to follow. All right, so I'm gonna unfold my instructions, and notice we'll have to do this in two stages because there's more instructions on the back. But something that I find helps is take your sprue here, Remember, it's one molar per sprue, and which one should we go for? Uh, let's go for the giant tire. That's this option. We'll go for the giant tire option. All right, so we're going to lay put our sprue in front of us. I've got some good German clippers here. I'm going to take the flat edge, and I'm going to find a piece to start with. So why don't I look for number five? And I'll hug the flat edge of the clippers to the sprue, and I'll start clipping the model off the gate. And I don't know why that's running. What the hell? Jesus Christ. All right, so then I'll take piece five, and I'll put it over top piece five. And then where's piece one? So as you can imagine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going down the list of pieces I need so I fill this sheet up. And what this allows me to do is, um, you know, you want to start at the left, work your way down, pay attention to the different options. Like we said, we're going to go for wheel option on this one. So instead, you can see the alternate option, the shredder option, is boxed out here. So we don't need to cut out these bits. And we'll just start laying the pieces out. All right, so we have all the pieces from the inside page cut out. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our X-Acto blade and our file. So if you have cut these close enough to separate the sprue gate, you'll notice there's a little nub left. Um, a lot of times you can get away leaving those on and just gluing them together, but it shows up in the paint job. And particularly with Necromunda models, the tolerances are very tight. So if there's ever a place where like a mold line or nubbins is actually going to have to fit in somewhere, a lot of times they can throw off the build. So what I like to do, take an X-Acto blade and we'll just trim that down like that. And you might call it there, but I like to go an extra step and I just take a couple of swipes of this and remove the mold line. And you'll notice the mold line is where the two halves joined the sprue gate. Um, that little nubbin is where the plastic was injected. So we'll just try to remove signs that they're, that this thing was molded. Now, the thing I should point out is if a mold line runs through a very highly detailed piece, which it doesn't on this model, sometimes I'll lead the mold line. You have to ask yourself, will removing the mold line enhance the build? or will it destroy detail and hurt the paint job? So that's a call you've got to make. I know this is an extra step, but I think it pays off, especially put washes on the model. It uh, tends to collect along these uh, lines here. All right, and so I'm not gonna make you watch me do all these pieces, but we're gonna go all around these pieces do the same thing, and when we come back, we'll start gluing. Now we've got all these pieces scraped down and filed and all cleaned up. Now we're ready to start gluing together. So once again, we're going to start up in the upper left corner. Now this part, I'll let people watch. Because um, I know some of these stages can be tricky, but first thing I'm going to do is start driving as I go. So I'm going to go and see, okay, that's how it's going to fit, which is something you got to pay attention to with the Necromunda models. And I'm going to use plastic glue for this, since this is plastic. 
Not a lot of times you can get away with just do the little nubs. But I want these guys squeezed together. So I'm going to run a little bean. Well, I might be running low on this stuff. But, come on. Run a little bead around the edge there. Okay. Let me do that. Let me just squeeze. All right. We'll start with the tracks. Okay, that fits really nicely. So I did the outer edge of the tracks there. Let's do little spots here. Little pylons. Just squeeze a little bit. Squeeze. Now, something I should tell you, I'm using plastic glue because it gives me the ability to make mistakes. So let's see here. All right. Dry fit. Okay. And that's why I'm going to dry fit. I was going to push this little chain too far back. Normally uh, GW does such a good job on their fits that if it looks like it's not working right it's probably because you're assembling it wrong. There we go. Put that piece first. I try, when I lay out the pieces, I try to match the orientation in the instructions. I find that, well, let's make sure I got them sorted right. I don't even actually need to do two of this. Okay, get the right guard there. Let's do the starboard guard. You don't want to use too much, otherwise the plastic glue will squish out. All right, it's a downward rocker. Haven't needed to use the tweezers yet. Now this one, you'll notice um, there's a shape on the back that seems to correspond with this shape here. Because they don't really actually give you a good sense of where the direction is, but you don't have to worry because the mold will tell you. And let's see how much play. It's got some wiggle, and that's the joy of plastic glue, is I can play around with it until I feel I've got it fitted properly. There. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set this to the side. And we're going to glue this in some sub-assemblies. Here, so now let's go to the tire thingy. And this is designed to fit only one way, so you don't have to worry about orientation. So we'll just run. Around the 
the joining edge here. That's right. <laughs> now when you dry fit, remember how you dry fitted. All right, so let me do that one there. only want to go one way so that's good put just a tiny bead around the edge of this tire hopefully when it squishes up when I squeeze it together it'll hide a little seam running down the middle of the tire Squeeze. Sometimes I have like little clamps I travel around with. See, there's the plastic glue squeezing up through the middle there. Normally I would um, file these down, but they put these little nubs on there, like these little treads, and I don't want to mess with those. I like, I think those will look good when I paint them up. Okay. Let's work on the port rocker. Here, let's see, where do they imagine I'm going to plug this in? Ah, there we go. Now you can feel it snap into place. Okay. Uh, that's right. If it doesn't feel like it's working, you probably just got to move it around a little bit. Where did I have it before? I have it, ba I have it backwards. <laughs> Alright, make sure you're pointing in the right direction. I really have to pay better attention to what I'm doing. Why? I had it. I literally had this. Okay, I'm going to line this up here. Get that there, that there. Okay, there we go. Is that right? Okay, since I probably rubbed most of the glue off of it. But you know what? Since I use plastic glue, if I catch my mistake early enough, I can fix it. Just jam a little glue in here. Since I ended up rubbing most of it off, trying to figure out... Because I was talking on the camera instead of paying attention. It doesn't help that they don't show the other side. Oh my god. You have plenty of plastic glue in you. What are you doing? I'm going to throw you out by a new one. It's a Games Workshop plan anyway. Okay, so let's see. I want to put... Okay. It's going to go that. Uh, so this matches up to this. That's the wheel guard. Okay. That means I'm going to have to get this right. Let's dry fit this again. I probably should have done this side first. 
Okay, let's see here. That's how it's supposed to look on the other side. All right. That, there we go. Okay. I wish I'd done this side first. Do that side first. That way you get a sense, because these little tracks hang over the top. That's why. That makes sense. So you know what? I love Necromunda models. I'm pretty good at assembling them, and I make a lot of mistakes with these things. Even if I do them multiple times. <laughs> So don't, it can be intimidating. So watch this video, see how not to do it. That way you can do it right. I forgot to clean this piece. There's a little nubbin sprue. Let's take care of that. There you go over there. See, now while I'm putzing around with this thing, this thing is drying and curring up. So I know I'm happy with how that's turning out. Clean the left side. See that this was a this nubbin was actually gonna probably affect the fit. Alright, clean that up quick. Let's make sure how do these look? They look similar? Okay. Okay, so I'll start with this sign. So am I doing this right? Okay. What's it supposed to do? Oh, so this is supposed to creep out of the top. And since I used plastic glue, I can knock this piece out, this piece out. Make sure the dry fit in. Didn't take my own advice. That's okay. I can just put a bead of glue down there. So put the back on first, then squeeze this into place. Okay, let's try this one more time. Just put a little glue right there. Just jam glue in here. Plastic glue is plastic glue. It comes down to how good the applicator is. And some of these GW ones suck. Okay, okay. Okay, so we got that, got that. Alright, now we're ready to move to the top right and start joining this thing. Oh, there's a little adapter there. It seems to want to go right there. And if I put it like that, it's okay. So this little guide is going to be our helper.
connection. Let's get a closer look at this. So that connects there. These connect here. Are they reaching? Let's look at the picture real quick. Oh, it's starting to fall down. Because it seems like this, that connector. Okay, let's go like that. Sometimes go back and look at the master picture. Okay, that looks like that's right. Which of these prongs go in the back? Okay, and this thingy, you don't really get a good job showing it. Okay, that just, to look at it from this angle, that just rests on top. Okay, that's an interesting control panel. Okay, so this prong, this prong, that's in our guide, goes in there. these pieces out so I don't feel like I'm forgetting anything. I need to worry about that ever since I did the Orlock bikes. Okay. Alright, so that's coming along. So here's going to be the test. See if I did that part right. If the body fits together, and snug it down like a bug. Jeez Louise. Okay, that gave you something to purchase into. Purchases the fit here. Okay. Okay, that's how it rests on its buttocks. Okay. Now let's do the other leg. Now before this sets up permanently, let's give this a little fit test. doesn't want to because it hasn't hardened on its little body. Okay, so let's see. Before we say we're done with the truck body, let's make sure everything lines up perfectly. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I am going to, since I know car body's done and this is kind of all tacky, let's just let it be tacky together. Okay, let's slide. 
slide him in. I know that's that's gonna do a good job alone in the front and rear together, just for fun to make sure it's not heaving. It's like making a U shape. Let's just put it down here. Let's make sure the fit is right. Okay. So what I am actually going to do next, uh, so the next steps call for putting the arms in, and, well it says put the plate on, put the arms in. I'm more comfortable putting the arms in than the plate on, but I like to make sure that the arms are in the right position as it balances against that. So I am going to slide these over to the side. And then I am going to do the same thing before. I'm going to cut these pieces out. Um, pick out my weapon options, lay this out, clean them, and then we'll start finishing the gluing um, while we still have some play in the arms, because I'm worried about attaching the handles to the arms. I want to do that all in one step. Alright, so we'll be back. All right, clip my bits out. I've cleaned them off, ready to get back to gluing again. So I want to start with the handles here. Let's see how these are supposed to fit. Actually, why don't we start with the arm bits? It's tough when you're trying to do like um, a lot of the Necromunda models require like this three pieces on once. I know this one said it didn't, but I've been burned when it says, oh, just stick them here. And you stick them in the other place, and they're supposed to technically meet up, but they don't, and everything's set. So let's go ahead, put that arm in there. So let's look at the bottom here, make sure, there we go, now the arm's in place. All right, now we'll use the arm to determine, come on, stay in place. There we go. Okay. So that went a lot smoother than I expected it to couple times. Alright, so let's just do there and the wrists. Let's make sure that pushes in. Yeah, not too bad. All right, so let's do the weapons. Okay, so these little bolts. Okay, all right. So I went with the uh, heavy bolter option. So it looks like Starboard side bolter. All right, if I can get my hands to obey me. Okay, I think it to the right prong.
forgot to glue these pieces. I feel that would be a mistake not to. Alright, so now let's check them, fit them around, make sure they're even. Cool. What are you left with? We've got his. I always get so excited to do it, forget to dry fit. It's like, oh, draw always dry fit or you make mistakes. I get so excited to put this thing together, I forget to dry fit it. Okay. So I'll put the seat rest, this headrest on there. Safety first. Alright, where are you missing? Ah, the head option. I went with the one on option 31, which was appeared to be the one they went with the box art. So they decided the head just to fit on one way. But what I like about this is they give you four heads per sprue, so eight in the box. That means if you want to do customs, like take regular bodies and fit out other vehicles you can if you want to custom up you can get the right ashland waist heads come on you I put on this little chain mohawk I should have waited for his head to dry more all right so let's look down the barrel here sight his head where you want it. Make sure the mohawk's good. Very cool. What else am I missing? The chest piece. Imagine doing that little arm shenanigans with the chest piece on, on it already. That's why I left it off. Alright, kind of just <laughs> drop it into place. And take these. Since my fat fingers. Wait, do I have it upside down? Let's double check. Yes, I do. That's why it's not fitting right. So that's some point, and I never know which point, I have to switch. Okay, grab it like that, and we'll lower you into position. Ow! Mother. Let's double check this chest piece. Okay, that goes a little higher up. Ah, there we go. Now it's slid into place. Of course, if you have the arms on, it's hard to put the chest piece on. I guess the chest piece wouldn't have been in the way, but it's still fun. But there, it looks like I actually finished this thing. And I am going to prime them on the base later. I like to texture the base. I want to make the base look like. Should I put them on the base? Texturing. I should probably just put them on now so I don't lose them. But let's take it and look at it like that. Let's get a good north-south line. No, I go ahead and put them on the base. Let's use liberal amounts of glue. Right, that looks like the places that will contact and Let's try to even him out here without crushing the bike itself. Very cool. 
And that looks good. It looks like he's together. It worked. All right. Well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. We're going to let this guy cure for a while, then we'll prime him up and paint him. What a good model. All right. We'll see you all next time.